What's up, everybody? Um, I was looking at my YouTube, and uh, I realized I haven't posted in, uh, like, two years. So, I'm going to post uh, what I got in the mail the past uh, three months, I want to say. But let me show you a quick uh, background of the uh, set. You got the Hitchcock. You got the really cool Ash. And, of course... I mean, who doesn't love uh, They Live? The Thing, keeping with the John Carpenter theme. My Beatles 45 and EPs. And then we got a a Cobra versus a uh, G.I. Joe protecting it, which makes no sense. I used to have the guns pointing at, at, I used to have them pointing the guns at each other. Anyways, Cliff Burton for which if I never learned for whom the bell saw on bass from Howie, so I could be in a band with him and Rob, I would have never picked up an instrument and never became a musician. So I have to thank him so much. My three favorite Kubrick movies, Pops, Captain Jazz 45, Dirt McGirt, the second of uh, Super 7's releases of uh, Old Dirty Bastard. And then we got um, little Keshi figures of um, Toxic Crusaders, a Misfits, signed by Damien, uh, the guitarist of Speed of Sound and sea, uh, Seawater. Um, fucking fantastic EPs. Then on the bottom here, we got really cool lunchbox, man, kind of lunchbox. It's got the pop in it. It's got a pin in it. It's got the actual sock. You can put it uh, in there. And um, a couple of really cool things. Also, we got uh, Jason from the original, uh, I mean, part two. And then my favorite Power Ranger. So, that is the setup. Let's get into the records. Okay, record number one, which literally came in today. Look, Mexico, this is all animal music on a beautiful oh no this one a green one but it's still a very rare black got it on discogs one of the greatest emo revival i guess you would say records ever made then we got mouse on the keys first record found this on ebay thank you blake my bandmate blake my best friend blake my brother Blake, the person who I'd do anything for, and I know that he would too. Anyways, that's why I'm glad he showed me this record. Okay, next. Mice on Parade. Mice Parade. Uh, um, this is their newest album since 2013, and it is my favorite album of the year, no question. Also on a, a clear disc. Really cool. Love it a lot. Favorite, al favorite album of the year so far. Then we got Self Evident. Um, an early 2000s uh, band. And um, I don't know. I listened to one song after Blake showed it to me. And I bought this. And I'm planning on buying the other one. And last but not least, my second favorite album of the, of the year, Dumb Waiter. I can't remember what the name of the album is called, but um, they have stepped away from the math rock genre. I think they are uh, just straight prog rock. Well, whatever the hell they are, they just absolutely kill it. It was one of the greatest honors of my life to play with them and Hello Cobra at Soul Bar. Okay, so I step into the hip hop realm. I literally got the last copy of this right before Doom passed away. It just took a while to come in. And um, man, definitely in my top five. Um, so good. Um, love it that you passed so many personas. Then, about three months ago, get on down. Put out this Victor Vaughn on uh, silver vinyl and 
5 out of 5. I mean, once again, another killer character and a beautiful record. Steve, uh, keeping with the Get On Down, I have Shuggy Otis's first record, but then I found out they put two more on Get On Down. So I was like, uh, yes, please. They knocked off 20 bucks. You bought the uh, set. And he is so good. Um, soul, psychedelia, R&B, um, jazz. But like every solo he plays has a jazz feeling to it. Whatever is going on in the background. Also, another cool fact about Shuggy, he played bass on Peaches and Regalia by Frank Zappa. So that's rad. This will tie in to get on down, but finally got three six mafia live by your rep on yellow vinyl. <laughs> but uh, here we go right here. Only uh, three hundred press of these, so I'm gonna keep that open for a little while. I got um, does it say it on there? Yeah, two hundred ninety eight out of five hundred right there. And then uh, Choices is great, but um, the album before that is when they were all six on it, which uh, those are my favorites, which will be in this video later. A little bit uh, lesser known albums, but they're still so awesome. Shane Parrish's Liverpool, who is the guitarist of the great math rock Beefheart-esque when they were a trio, Alucha T. Stas. And this is absolutely incredible. And I had the honor to see him in Columbia, um, I wanna say last Tuesday. And um, it was the last show that If Our Gallery ever had. And they always had jazz shows there and I saw three jazz shows there and it was absolutely beautiful because he played a set of improv music and then a set of songs that he actually put lyrics to and uh damn shane really good album right here and really good performance that night here's one of my favorites right here patrick shiroshi Hidemi. it is a um yellow vinyl and it's a tribute to his granddad and this man played saxophone for a lot of bands, but uh, more prominently to me on the last Up Sonic Crux album. And it was so cool to meet him. And uh, we've stayed in touch since then. Uh, I think that show was 2016. Could be wrong. Aluja Jesus closed it out. It was awesome. Oh my God. Uh, it was like 10 days from my birthday. So. Got a couple friends to come up with me and uh, it was a blast. And this album is insane because it's loop saxophones and it's just beautiful. Always a good record to put on. Doomflower is um, Bobby Blurg, long time member. I wanna say um, original member from Joan of Arc. And um, Joan of Arc just recently put out their last album. I'm hoping you come back, Tim. Come on, Tim. Gotta come back, man. Um, but uh, this is just phenomenal. Good job, Bobby. Uh, I hope you tour it, and I hope we get to see you soon. <clears throat> You've always been a really cool guy to me. And last with the whole like math rock theme, this is called uh, Lin, L Lin, L Y N Y N. So like Lin, Yin, and it's called Lexicon, but it's the guitarist from Monobody and, um, oh my God, I'm not gonna forget this right now. Um, uh, Uh, the guitars from Mono Body and uh, Loose, Lip, Loose Lips Sink Ships. Um, I've listened to the, the I've listened to the cassette so far, and it is 
unbelievable. Um, put out on Super, uh, Nomni's label, uh, the drummer from um, Monobody, and many other killer bands. So, 10 out of 10 on this electronic album. Okay. Keeping in faith with the uh, kind of old school releases. I want to say thank you to Bobby. This is the first Make Believe EP. Which consists of him on bass, Zan, uh, Z Sam Zurich on um, guitar, who played bass on Owls, uh, guitar on uh, Ghost and Vodka. He contributed to Joan of Arc. Um, he played bass in Captain Jazz too. Owls is Captain Jazz. Without the guy from the Promise Ring. <laughs> and then we got uh, Nakin Silla on drums and Wurlitzer uh, keyboard, which is just uh, adds such a crazy element to it. And then, um, you know, Tim with his incredible vocals. This right here is one of my favorite. Uh, got it on silver vinyl. Oh, yeah, I can flash it to you real quick. It's right here. The Gap. One of my favorites, all acoustic, and it is beautiful, Tim, once again, you already know. I only need one more um, Joan of Arc record to have them all, so that's very cool. Okay, this is very new. As you can see, I got it right back here, but they put it on vinyl, and it sounds beautiful. So happy they finally got to do that. They get brought together every now and again and play, but it's in Texas and I'm in Georgia, so it's hard to get there. But one day I will bring them here. I promise. <laughs> okay, so Bad Dudes um, is uh, actually one of the bassists from uh, Upsonic Crux. Um, a band he made, I think, like, after he quit in, like, 2002. And this is the second album. The first album's incredible. Like, incredible. 10 out of 10, perfect. This is 9 out of 10. I only say, like, it's, like, one notch down just because, um... It's a little bit more tamed than the first album. I know that sounds insane, but, you know, I, I, I like the madness of, uh... The first album, and it's great. And, um... I've only seen it on uh, Discogs once, and I missed out, and it breaks my heart. But here it is, you know. Got it for 10 bucks, sealed. Really cool. And then, yes, Piglet did re-release, you know, like 10 years ago, and they put Mad Science on there. But this is... Um, the guitarist label. I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting your name, man. Um, and he just made it like a normal, you know, the six songs. And I couldn't, I couldn't not have this. So I, I had to have it. Like this album, I remember it coming out in uh, 2005 and being absolutely blown away or uh 2006 maybe yeah yeah 2005 2006 and oh my god one of the most i'd say when it comes to math rock the most beautiful instrumental album of all time okay here's uh two more the new black midi I really got to take uh, time to listen to this and um, decipher it. I love the first one immediately, their first album immediately, right, when I heard it. Their second album, it took me about three listens. This one, I love, I love what they're trying to go for, but it hasn't hit me yet. So we'll see what happens in the future. This right here is in my top five. 
um, Black Country, New Road, Ants from up there, um, on, um, ooh, I want to say it's on blue, yep, on beautiful blue vinyl, and it is incredible, 10 out of 10, no question about it. Now it's time for the scores. The Power of the Dog by Johnny Greenwood. 10 out of 10. When does he not deliver a killer score? Spencer, Johnny Greenwood. 10 out of 10. He got nominated for that first one and for Phantom Thread, which I think, other than There Will Be Blood, is the second best. Um, but this is beautiful too. Then I got my favorite movie of the year so far, The Northman. Um, this is actually like a lot of fun to listen to. And um, it is on, I want to say, uh, silver? Uh, no, it's red and another color. Can't remember. Red and uh, maybe, maybe gray. But, um, it's great. I got it on cassette, too, and rode it around and listened to it with my uncle before we went to a movie, and we were just, <laughs> it definitely, um, uh, amplified our conversations. <laughs> now for the Vinyl Me Please. Well, I got this one off eBay, but, um, this is John Cale. I want to say the raw mix and damn it sounds amazing and it is on this killer well you can't really there you go a little bit of red in there fantastic um e40 Hall of the game. I give this like a four out of five. I need to listen to it a little bit more, but I like what I heard so far. John Coltrane's Sunship, which I already have a copy of this, but um, it is one of the greatest drum albums I've ever heard in my life, and I am a drummer, so I just had to get it and just see what mixes they did to it differently and all that good stuff. 3-6 Mafia when the smoke clears, the last time that all six of them were together. This is absolutely fantastic. With intros like, uh, with tracks like Sipping on Scissor. Um, where the Cheese at? Um, take a Bump, Memphis. Uh, just, an age of, just another crazy click. Who run it? I mean, fantastic. If you're into early, good crunk rap. Then, these last two I have already too, but these are violently please essentials. And I don't know where I'd be other than like with, you know, Wu-Tang's first albums, where I'd be with like conscious hip hop without this fantastic record. One vinyl is red and one is green. It is so cool. And they came with a little um, cards, which I'm going to take all those from Bomb Me Please. I'm going to put them, uh, I don't know, somewhere cool, like in a 12 by 12 fashion. And then lastly, but not least, Modest Mouse, The Lones of Crowded West. I just had to get this because I just think it's a 10 out of 10, and with their discography, there is, they have good albums, but this might be their most perfect. Really hope you enjoyed those reviews. I will definitely be posting more. My next one is going to be my top 10 math rock records, so I'm excited to do that because that's one of my biggest passions, uh, and that's what started me. Uh, was uh, collecting records first. I just wanted to get all the Beatles I could just to hold it when I was 12. But then around 18, no, 
actually earlier than that, 16. I started hearing Don Cab, and then I realized that they had six inches, uh, six inches, seven inches. I was like, I gotta get all these. And then I did, and I got all their records, and there are records all around me. So, anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like if you did. It would mean a lot to me and uh, help build the channel. Um, I will start posting on a regular schedule. And um, I hope you have a good and a happy day. And everything in your life is great. And if it's not, just keep keep the positive energy up and um, things will manifest as you want them to. I truly do, do believe that there's a positive force in this world that brings us back to good things. And um, I just wanna say once again, I thank you so much for watching these and JMS to Flex. I think that's Sammy Sosa. <laughs> I'll do this. Wu-Tang forever. Peace. I'm out, y'all.